My name is Jim Garrison, and we're here at the Gilmore Car Museum in Hickory Corners, Michigan, which is about 12 miles northeast of Kalamazoo. We have the Cars of Kalamazoo on display here, prominent among all of those, the checker car. And we're here to go over a few of the models that are on display, explain a little bit about them, and hopefully you'll get an idea of what an interesting and remarkable history Checker Motors had in the automotive industry. The story of Checker Motors is as interesting as any automotive story in American history. Morris Markin came to the United States in 1913 fleeing a Jewish persecution in Tsarist Russia. He formed Checker Cab Manufacturing Company in 1931. This is the Checker Model M. Checker came out with the Model M and it was very well received by uh, the taxi franchises and automotive reviewers. Checker was quite progressive in the design of their vehicles and they were technologically up to date on all of the things they did. This, for example, has four wheel uh, hydraulic brakes and uh, it has a, an absolutely amazing design, I think, they're beautiful. And we're gonna take a little look at the engine. It is a Buddha, a six cylinder Buddha J214 six cylinder engine, which was a good power plant for the time. It's uh, completely restored, it runs very well. You can see what looked to be primitive electronics, but uh, at that time it was uh, more than adequate. On the other side, they had an external shaft, which ran the water pump, the starter, and the alternator all together. One of the things that folks often comment on about checkers are these remarkable headlights. Headlight buckets were popular on cars of this vintage, and checker came up with something completely unique. I know of no other vehicle that has this same style of light. The front end of a checker Model M was probably one of the most glorious things that Checker ever did. The fenders are forward and upswept so that they would be less likely to be damaged. The whole vehicle is just breathtaking to behold and I can imagine that people waiting for a taxi saw this coming, they would have wanted to get in it. This is the inside of a Checker Model M, 1931. And it was made for passenger comfort. Having so much extra room was one of those things that Checker was noted for. They have lights throughout, they have cords for making easy entry. They could get five people into the back of a Checker and take them where they needed to go. Checker made all of their cars to be quick to repair, very rugged, and as much creature comfort as they could put into it. By 1931, they had figured out that the cabbie counted a little bit too. Some of them did have heaters, and uh, of course it's got an updated taxi meter in it. I've sat in this vehicle, and it's pretty cramped for a very tall or a portly cabbie. They would have uh, been uh, in it for all those hours, and. They had to have been a little tired by the end of the day. It is worth noting that the relationship between E.L. Cord of Auburn Cord Duesenberg and Morris Markin was a, was a good friendly one. Not only did Checker start using the Lycoming engines, which were produced by one of Cord's companies, but uh, they, uh, they had a working relationship. And uh, when the board tried to oust Markin in 1933, Markin sold his shares to E.L. Cord, who fired the board members, reinstated his own board members as the members, the new board members, and he reinstated Markin as president of the company. Following that time, there was a period where E.L. Cord and Morris Markin worked together to use the stock from Checker to uh, gain other parts. Markin had bought Parmalee, and uh, he also had bought Yellow Cab of Chicago. Yellow Cab and Checker Cab were competitors in a number of markets, primarily Chicago. 
John Hertz owned Yellow Cab. Hertz went on to become a major player in uh, politics and in business, and I think he lost interest in the taxi industry and automotive industries because Markin was able to move in and purchase Yellow Cab. This is a 1933 Checker Model T. It was basically a remake of the Model M. It had many of the same features and design. The headlights are a little different, probably because the rectangular ones were very difficult to make. I'm going to open the hood a little bit very carefully and show you the Lycoming engine. This is the Lycoming straight eight engine. It was a marvelous power plant. Those horns must have gotten the attention of almost anybody that got in front of a checker. With that eight-cylinder engine, a checker was one of those that would get you to the church on time. On the side of early vehicles, they quite often had these doors, and uh, they were for additional cooling. You can imagine on a really hot day where in city traffic you're constantly going, as much cooling as you could provide the engine, whether it was through the regular water-cooled radiator or just letting some of the air out, it was great to be able to get more cooling to the engine. And there are five doors on each side of the hood of this Model T, and there were four doors on each side of the Model M. This is a 1936 Checker Model Y. It continued the excellence of checkers, not only in design and function, but it added more safety and comfort features for passengers and for the drivers. This still has the Lycoming straight eight engine in it, which at this time was producing, I think around 135 horsepower, and it was a very rugged and reliable engine. The design of this was not only aesthetically pleasing to people who wanted to ride and uh, take a taxi, but it also has a number of features like this scoop in the front to gather air. That air could circulate through a sunroof. The rear window also folds outward, so air could just flow through the whole vehicle. And again, on a hot day like today, it was a great place for people to get where they needed to go in cities all over America. Checker sold to uh, cities large Sometimes orders of 500 of the exact same vehicle would be headed for New York or Chicago, and they sold to very small taxi franchises because it was the most identifiable taxi. They would sell two of them to a little town in Wisconsin or wherever. Altogether, Checkers production was about 250,000 vehicles. Um, before 1956, they made about 150, and then about 100,000 in the 20-some in the years that followed. This Model Y is just such a, a remarkable vehicle. It, again, made so much room available for the passengers. It is so easy to step in and out of. It has lots of room where passengers this particular one did not have jump seats, but many of them, I presume, did. And it's just plush. You can sit there comfortably. It's uh, comfortable in every way. They made them to keep their passengers happy. This particular checker happens to be more related to the entertainment industry. This is the 804, which was on the TV show Taxi which ran for a number of years in the 70s, and it has an interesting history as well. The, the car was used for the show, and it was very successful, and I think it helped give Checkers recognition again. When the show was finally canceled, the car was returned to Checker. It was painted blue, and it was used as the vehicle that would take Checker employees or whomever needed to go somewhere related to Checker, they would take this vehicle. After Checker ceased production of taxi cabs in 1982, they stayed in business doing automotive supply, mostly for General Motors. 
Checker made the F frames for Firebirds and Camaros starting in 1976 and running, I believe, until 1988. But we also made tailgates for Blazers and Suburbans. We made bumpers for Ford and for GM and for some other vehicles. We had jobs from Dodge, a tailgate there. We also did uh, work for International Harvester on occasion. So Checker was had always been, to some smaller measure, into the automotive supply business, making things for other manufacturers. And uh, when Checker stopped making cars, they went full into production of uh, so many different parts. There were frames, there were lift gates and tailgates and hoods and roofs and doors and fenders. And Checker, contrary to popular conception, was a world-class supplier. We were able to do outer panels and assemblies under the very strictest of inspection. We managed to prove that we were capable of it. More than anything else, what started to challenge Checker was the things that were going on with the economy. Automotive companies were awarding their bids to companies that worked well with them. Part of that working well was to take less money for the parts that you were producing and sending and selling to them. So Checker was in the position of, of getting less money and finally even in some cases losing money for the parts that they were producing. But there were a number of other things that challenged uh, Checker in the last days of production. It was my experience to work at Checker for 32 years, primarily as a tool and die maker. There was some consideration on a few occasions of doing a new design for Checker cars. In 1977, Ed Cole, the former president of General Motors, came to Checker wanting to, I guess, come out of retirement and assume a new role in leadership in a car company. On May 2nd of 1977, Ed Cole died in a plane crash coming back to Kalamazoo and any hope for a new checker seems to, uh, to go along with it. Another reason that checker ceased production was that it was just not practical or economically feasible to continue making these vehicles in the old style manufacturing methods when newer mass produced cars could serve the same purpose of delivering people uh, in taxi cabs and it was much more economical to buy them it was easier to find parts for them and so checkers just weren't as necessary or needed in the taxi cab industry anymore and so ultimately it just uh, it just had to go down This happens to be a 1980 checker, even though it looks like a 1960. Checkers didn't have the money to be able to afford new tooling to rebuild everything into a different model. So they just stayed for 20 years or more with the same successful model that had been serving the American public for a long time. And this is one of the cars that Checker made. This is a Checker Winkoff, as it's called. There was a gentleman in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, who saw checkers as something more than just taxi cabs. He saw them as uh, limousines, and so he fancied them up a little bit in this fashion, with the two-tone paint scheme, with the Landau top and the opera window, and with the uh, fancy wheels. Those ones are called knuckles because they kind of look like knuckles. They redid some interior parts and just made them into much more presentable looking cars. Uh, it's still a checker. This is uh, the same as a taxi cab except for the little fancy features that were added. The car itself is very nicely appointed. I can show you the back seat, which is very spacious as all checkers were. Very comfortable. At one time I had jump seats in this, but because I'm long-legged, I 
extended the seat risers and just uh, brought those back four inches and I can stretch out very comfortably in the front seat and still have plenty of room in the back seat. This one, this 1980, has a General Motors engine in it. It's a little V6 and part of the reason that Checkers went with small engines was because they had uh, both fuel efficiency and emissions standards that they had to meet. Now I have redone this one a little bit, but uh, that little 229 V6 is a small engine. I modified the engine with uh, a small four barrel carburetor and uh, a nice Edelbrock intake. It doesn't have very good pickup, but uh, it gets better than 20 miles per gallon on the highway and that's not bad for a two-ton tub. Checker also made different um, models of this same vehicle. Uh, they made uh, an eight-door aero bus, which was used for hauling large numbers of people. It would handle up to 12. They also made some six-door versions of the aero bus during the 60s. And uh, they made a, a limousine, which was much the same as this taxi cab, only nine inches longer in the back seat and you could be seven foot five and you could stretch your legs all the way out in a checker limousine and you'd still have room at the end of your feet checkers were remarkable cars and the whole story of checker is probably in one of the most interesting stories in all of automotive history I've tried to explain some of the interesting aspects of checker cars and checker history, but I have to add that uh, I've done it from memory without a script and there may be some inaccuracies or omissions and I hope I haven't made too many mistakes. Whatever ones I have made, I ask for your understanding and forgiveness.